honoring the home run king. Oh, there's a long drive. Ball just deep, deep. The legacy of Hank Aaron in his own words. God gave me the ability to play the game of baseball. And remembered by those who knew him. He's like a god. We're, we're just mere earthlings. He was... You know, he was on a different level. The city of Mobile loses a hero. It's a great loss, not just to the, uh, the Aaron family. It's a great loss to this region. But his legacy lives on. I hope that the home run is not the only thing that people look at me and say, that's the only thing he could do. NBC 15 News at 6 starts now. One of baseball's biggest icons, Mobile's own Hank Aaron, has passed away. He died in his Atlanta home last night at the age of 86. He was known as Hammer and Hank, shattering Babe Ruth's home run record in 1974. He held that title of home run king for 40 years. Even if you take that away, Aaron was still one of the greatest to ever trot onto the diamond. It is one of the most iconic moments in sports history. Henry Aaron hitting home run 715, passing the legendary Babe Ruth. While it may be the most well-known moment in his career, it is far from Aaron's only amazing moment in an equally amazing life. He grew up with seven siblings in the Tolmanville community. 1952, he left Mobile after signing a contract with the Indianapolis Clowns of the Negro Leagues. It took just three months for Aaron to impress enough to receive two major league offers, one from the Giants, the other from the Braves. Aaron once said the Braves offer was for $50 more a month. $50, all that kept him from being a teammate of Willie Mays. He made it to the big leagues in 1954, the first of 23 seasons in the majors. He made the All-Star Game roster a record 21 times, a Hall of Famer's Hall of Famer. He's like a god, you know, because for me, I... I, I never put myself in the same vein of those guys. You know, yeah, we made the Hall of Fame, but there's a different level to Hall of Famers. Aaron is baseball's all-time leader in RBIs. Only Pete Rose and Ty Cobb had more hits, but it was his pursuit of Ruth that defined his career. In a dark chapter of American history, many fans objected to a black man breaking a sacred record. In 1973, Aaron received nearly a million pieces of mail, more than any other American. Many were hate-filled letters. It was tough. It, it was, uh, I, had, I had my problems. Um, and he again, you know, uh, I kind of put them aside and said to myself that uh, uh, God gave me the ability to play the game of baseball. And if he can put his hands on me and bless me for the rest of my life, for, for, the, for, this, for this season, that I'm going to do everything that I can to make his words holy. Aaron entered the 1974 season with 713 home runs, and in his first at bat of the season, he tied Ruth's record of 714, setting up history four nights later in Atlanta. Oh, a long drive. Just... Aaron would go on to finish his career with 755 home runs, a record that stood for more than 30 years until it was broken by Barry Bonds. But it's a record many still believe belongs to Hank. After spending several years as an executive for the Braves, Aaron continued to hit home runs in life. His Chasing a Dream Foundation funded a large number of kids' college educations, giving, giving Hammering Hank a lasting legacy off the field as well as on. Fellow Hall of Famer Cleon Jones is also a Mobile native. He was Hank Aaron's rival on the diamond, but off the field, the two were very close. NBC 15's Jaysha Patel spoke to Jones today about Hank's legacy. He has a lasting legacy, not just in Mobile, or the state of Alabama, <clears throat> but around the world. So it's difficult to for me to stand here and eulogize Hank Aaron because I don't have the words and we don't have enough time. But I, I just would hope that everybody realize the greatness 
uh, and, and the, the sheer uh, ability to be humble, that was Hank Aaron. That's the way I knew him. That's the way he would always be. Hank Aaron's childhood home stands next to the stadium which bears his name in Mobile. For decades, it has been a monument to his humble beginnings. NBC 15's Colin Cahill is there tonight. Colin, walking through that house shows where Hank really came from. From magazines and bats to his mother's china cabinet, Hank Aaron's childhood home serves as a time capsule for all future generations to walk through. It's, it's a member of our family passing. For John Hilliard, coming to work this morning felt different before he even heard the news. When I got to the gate, I hadn't heard that he had passed yet, and there was a, a film crew at the gate, and I'm thinking, I know, I knew in my heart what had happened, you know. Since moving Hank Aaron's home to its current location outside of Hank Aaron Stadium, Hilliard has been part of it all. He's collected, placed, and detailed the memorabilia that all hang on the walls of Hank Aaron's childhood home. It took a couple of years and it took a whole day to move it, you know, from one place to the other. And we was actually, we had people here doing it that day, but uh, I was in Atlanta with Hank at his house and he was giving us some more stuff for it the day that we actually moved it. Even after all of his home runs and his incredible highlights, John remembers Hank for what he was off the field and out of the limelight. I think he's one of the top, you know, two, one, two or three players ever, but he was, he was even a better human being. He was the most humble, gentle, uh, loving person that I've ever met. The home is open to the public and serves as a reminder to all those that walk through it of the legacy that Hammer and Hank leaves behind. I think it's so inspirational. I know for the kids in school, for the kids that play here, because when, when we did have a AAA team here, they would have the kids come and see it. And the most important thing in life is to see something that you can touch. When the Bay Bears moved, um, you know, we formed this company with one goal in mind, and it was to save not only Hank Aaron Stadium, but keep the, the childhood home and museum on the grounds of Hank Aaron Stadium, keep it maintained, keep it open, um, add stuff to it, you know, regrow it in the community and, and teach people about a legendary man. Now the Mobile Sports Entertainment Group, the group that takes care of the home, they're planning a tribute to Hank Aaron in the coming weeks. Reporting live in Mobile, Colin Cahill, NBC 15 News. Colin, thanks. Another tribute to the baseball legend comes from the man and woman who raised Hank Aaron in that home 24 years ago when Hank Aaron Stadium opened. Then NBC 15 reporter Dave Straker spoke with Herbert and Estella Aaron, Hank's parents. His dad could still remember how Hank learned to hit curveballs. Yeah, you know how you throw the ball up on the house, be waiting until it can. You know which way it's coming and swing and hit at it. And played soda water top. You can't hardly hit a soda water top because you're making all that. Years, I placed huh? a lot of and I said, throw it on this side, man. You're going to knock on the other one now. Of all his accolades, Herbert said seeing his son's name on the stadium in Mobile made him the proudest. The people who grew up with Hank Aaron also sharing their favorite memories of him. NBC 15's Rachel Wilkerson spoke to a childhood friend today. Rachel, he says he is proud of how far Aaron's legacy has reached. He is Greg. Dr. Willie Clemens couldn't help but smile every time he said Hank Aaron's name. That's because of how much Aaron has impacted not only his life, but the world. It's pleasant memories is it, that will give me the strength as well as my wife, because we talked about that earlier today in order to continue on. Dr. Willie Clemens has been friends with Hank Aaron for 70 years. Just three weeks ago, they were making plans to visit each other. The news of Aaron's death this morning came as a surprise. He says Aaron wasn't having any unusual body aches or symptoms. He went to bed last night uh, and uh, wasn't feeling a little well, but I mean, that's typical. But then this morning uh, when Billy went to, uh, to, to wake him up, uh, she couldn't. And so he passed in his sleep. Uh, so it was just completely shocked because that was not expe expected. And uh, the good part of it in terms of death that he died in peace. Dr. Clemens says their friendship was filled with everlasting memories from watching Hank grow up to the painful journey he endured making history in the major league to Mardi Gras, charities and other events. Those 
of the, I will always remember that and the fun memories that we've had over the years. We did a lot of things together. Most importantly, though, he reflects on how humble Aaron was, how determined, and how he loved to give back to the youth and community. And those values of being very humble um, and being forgiving and providing service, uh, all of the, those are, were, were key, and that's how he lived, lived his, his, his life. We have several stories on our website about Hank Aaron and his legacy. You can find them at mindbc15.com. Greg. Rachel, thanks. All across the state of Alabama, flags are flying at half staff in honor of the baseball legend. Governor Kay Ivey ordering flags lowered through sunset today. In a statement, she extended sympathies to Aaron's family, friends, and former teammates. Here in Mobile, in a very classy move, the Senior Bowl will be honoring hammering Hank. Today, Executive Director Jim Nagy announcing players will wear this helmet sticker, Hank's number 44, during next Saturday's game. This morning, Mobile Mayor Sandy Stimson released a statement on the Port City's legendary son. It reads in part, he will always hold a special place in our hearts here in the city of Mobile, a humanitarian, business leader, philanthropist, and a national baseball icon. Hank Aaron represented the best of our city. Mayor Stimson also shared a photo of himself with Hank, memories the mayor will undoubtedly hold on to forever. NBC 50 News was first to tell you about the passing of Hank Aaron with a breaking news text alert. Download our free NBC 15 News app and sign up for text alerts to be the first to know about breaking news. Well, still to come, making the port city proud, how another Mobile native is making history up in Washington. But first, feeling left behind, why doctors say the vaccine shortage is impacting people that can't even get it yet. This is NBC 15 News, winner of Best Newscast from the Alabama Broadcasters Association. You're watching NBC 15 News, winner of the regional Edward R. Murrow Overall Excellence Award. Well, the plan was to have health care providers and the chronically ill in Alabama vaccinated by December. Health care providers got the shot, but those with chronic illness are still waiting. NBC 15's James Gordon joins us now with a look at what could be a deadly waiting game for some patients, James. You know, back in November, state health officials really had hoped that all chronically ill patients would have been vaccinated by now, but like we said, that hasn't happened, and it has some of their doctors worried for their patients. All across Alabama, from the small towns to the big city, doctors are worried for their patients. Dr. Marsha Rollison, who practices in Bruton, says she tried to get the vaccine for one of her patients who has a chronic kidney condition. And I wanted her to get the vaccine, and she is 63 years old. So two days ago, I called four different places trying to get the vaccine for her, and I was told that they could not give it to her because she was not in a group that was approved at this time. There are likely more cases just like this one in other parts of the state. The problem is there's not enough vaccine to go around. State health officials have been warning the vaccine supply is limited and is now vaccinating those age 75 and older, police and firefighters and medical workers. That's between 650 and 700,000 people. So those with chronic illnesses will be included in the next phase. Doctors who fear their chronically ill patients could die if they get the virus or having to ask their patients to sit tight. I think we're gonna have to be patient but we need to keep up with the availability of the vaccine so that as soon as there is adequate vaccine, people with chronic illnesses can get that vaccine. And from the federal level to the state level, the push is to get more vaccine out there as soon as possible. But now we're live in Baldwin County, James Gordon, NBC 15 News. Just a little over two weeks ago, Hammer and Hank got the first dose of the coronavirus vaccine at Morehouse College. In what would be one of his final public appearances, Aaron said he hopes he could inspire his fellow African Americans to get the vaccine as well. I feel quite proud of myself of doing something like this. You know, it's just, just a small thing that can help zillions of people in this, in this country. 
Let's take a look at the latest vaccine numbers right now. This week, the state of Alabama has given nearly 50,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine. That's more than the first three weeks of vaccinations combined, but so far Alabama has only given out 50% of the doses we've been allotted. Each vaccine requires two doses. NBC 15 News is dedicated to keeping you informed when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine and the impact on our community. Visit our website, mynbc15.com, for all of our coverage on the pandemic. In Washington, another Mobilian is making history. The yeas are 93, the nays are two, and the nomination is confirmed. Retired General Lloyd Austin has been named Defense Secretary. The Senate approved his nomination this morning, Austin becoming the first black defense secretary in American history. He served in the military for 41 years, retiring back in 2016. NBC 15 weather with Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals, certified most accurate forecast by weather rate. It has been a gray sort of day. It has been damp, but as you look at the radar, there's not much in the way of rain left. Light showers, isolated showers, all moving from west to east. That means, though, your streets will still stay damp. Rainfall totals a third of an inch, roughly, at Mobile's airport, Pensacola's airport. Many other communities, though, picked up over an inch of rain, so the numbers are slowly climbing as we work our way slowly toward the spring growing season. Here's the change though, by late afternoon, the low clouds were coming in from the north and that's sort of a little bit of dry air. That's part of the reason why the rain tapered and has almost ended, but moving through the weekend, it's not totally going to go away. The clouds stay with us tomorrow. There will be some breaks of sun and 10% of the area could see a shower, mostly close to the beaches, close to the coastline. We do have a mild start for tomorrow though, with temperatures by the afternoon settling in the lower 60s, basically right where we are right now. At Mobile's airport, a north wind, seven miles an hour. That's keeping the humidity at 90% rather than 100% and expect those temperatures to just ease down slowly into the lower 50s by early in the morning. That's 10 degrees above average, so it's a relatively mild start to what's going to be a mostly cloudy weekend with a couple of showers, a sprinkle possible near the coast. Here's your forecast map and what it shows. Gray skies tonight. Notice by 7 in the morning north of Highway 84, you might get to see brighter skies and you would think that's going to work its way to the coast. Not the case by the afternoon along the coast. There could be some isolated showers and again we're talking very light rain. Even late afternoon the I-10 corridor or southward could see some wet weather and that's the pattern that takes us into Sunday. Your seven day tracker shows Sunday no more than 10% of the area could get wet. Now Monday, another round of rain, low 70s. Wednesday, hopefully our final round of rain. And by late in the week, we'll get to see some sun. Alan, thanks. Be sure to stay weather aware by downloading our free NBC 15 weather app. Track storms on the go and receive alerts when disruptive weather is headed your way. Just search WPMI WX in the App Store or Google Play. Well, the baseball world continues to react to the death of Mobile native Hank Aaron. After the break, fellow Hall of Famer and Braves legend Chipper Jones on just how good Hammer and Hank was. 15 Ultimate Alabama Athlete. Sponsored by Gulf Coast BMW Centers. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Today's Ultimate Alabama Athlete is Henry Hank Aaron. His 755 career home runs has been broken by Barry Bonds, but many still consider Aaron the home run king. Aaron was more than a home run hitter. Take them all away, he still had more than 3,000 hits in his career. He's still Major League Baseball's all-time leader in total hits, RBIs, and extra base hits. The Hammer, Hank Aaron, today's ultimate Alabama athlete. Well, the Braves organization is paying tribute to the home run king. Today, MLB Hall of Famer Chipper Jones talked about how dominant Hank Aaron was and how you could just tell by looking at his baseball card. You look at the back of that baseball card and the print is so small because he was there for like 25 years, you know, worth the stat. It's like, you know, he played he played for the Galactic All-Stars, you know? I mean, we're, we're just mere earthlings, you know? And and he was, you know, he was on a different level. Chipper joined Hank Aaron in Cooperstown two years ago, along with a dozen other Atlanta players and managers. 
Chipper's teammates are remembering the late great Hank Aaron. Former outfielder and 10-time Gold Glove winner Andrew Jones posted this picture of him and Aaron on Twitter. The caption read, we lost a legend. Rest in peace, my friend. The man who caught Hank's historic 715th home run, also remembering the legend today, former Braves relief pitcher Tom House tweeted this picture along with his account of the moment in sports history. He caught the ball in the bullpen that night. House said when he handed Aaron the ball, it was the first time he ever saw Aaron cry. Right now, South Alabama is taking on Georgia State in women's and men's basketball. Before tonight's games in Atlanta, the two teams honored the baseball legend who represented both cities. The Panthers football team plays in the stadium that used to be Turner Field, just across the street from where Hank Aaron hit number 715. Well, that's going to do it for NBC 15 News at 6. We'll be back with the very latest news, weather, and sports at 7 here on UTV 44, then back on NBC 15 for the news at 10.